A month after an explosion dampened spirits at SpaceX, the Elon Musk-led aerospace giant is back in business and ramping up preparations for the maiden orbital flights of the ambitious Starship. But it's worth noting that SpaceX won't launch the orbital maiden flight of Starship in August, according to a Radio Spectrum license application the company filed with the U.S. Federal Communications Commission. Worry not, though, as the Mars-bound spacecraft could finally make its orbital test flight on September 1st. That's because SpaceX set out a six-month window that opens on the first day of September. The license was granted by the FCC on Wednesday, August 10th. Interestingly enough, SpaceX wants to attempt a Starship booster catch during its first orbital launch. An updated document submitted by SpaceX to the US FCC has revealed details about the company's plan for the first Starship booster catch attempt. The document follows a different batch submitted by SpaceX in June of 2021, when the company detailed its plans for Starship's orbital launch debut as background while requesting permission from the FCC to use Starlink dishes for an in-flight telemetry. A month earlier, a different request focused on more standard telemetry antennas had already revealed that even if the mission went perfectly, Starship would not fully reach orbit on its first attempted spaceflight. It also confirmed that SpaceX had no intention of recovering the upper stage or super heavy booster assigned to Starship's launch debut, a sort of implicit acknowledgement that success was then not expected on the first try. Twelve months later, SpaceX has submitted an updated overview of Starship's orbital launch debut in a new request for permission to use multiple Starlink dishes on both stages. While most of the document is the same, a few particular details have changed about Super Heavy's role in the mission. This time around, SpaceX says the Super Heavy booster will separate, perform a partial return, and land in the Gulf of Mexico or return to Starbase and be caught by the launch tower. Prior to this document, SpaceX's best case plans for the first Super Heavy booster to launch never strayed from a controlled splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico potentially demonstrating that it would be safe to attempt booster recovery on the next launch, all but guaranteeing the first booster would be lost at sea. A year later, SpaceX appears to be a bit more confident and wants to leave itself the option to attempt to recover the first Super Heavy booster that launches. However, the company has dramatically complicated the process of testing early Super Heavy and Starship recovery, and thus reuse, by fully removing traditional and predictable landing legs, and designing its latest prototypes such that the only way they can be recovered in one piece is with a giant mechanized launch tower called Megazilla. But it's obvious that the more complex a thing is, the harder it is to get. So why does SpaceX decide it's something such as this? Well, in fact, the plan marks a sharp departure from SpaceX's other rocket reuse efforts. Specifically, the technique could be an upgrade over the drone ships currently used for Falcon 9 boosters returning to Earth after missions. If the tower can catch the rocket and move it back into position onto the launch pad, that could help SpaceX reuse rockets faster than ever. The fastest turnaround time for a Falcon 9 booster from the previous flight to reflight is 21 days. In March of 2020, Musk said that he wanted Starship to be able to fly three times per day. If Musk wants to build a city on Mars by 2050, he might come to depend on that rapid turnaround time. In 2019, he estimated that the city would require around 1 million tons of cargo to reach self-sufficient status. If each ship carries 100 tons, that means SpaceX will need to make 10,000 flights over the next 30 years, or around 333 per year. If the ambitious feature proves its capabilities this September, then it could break new ground. That could help the firm achieve its most ambitious target in the shortest time. But how exactly will Mechazilla's giant chopstick arms enable SpaceX's Mars-bound rocket? The launch tower and its three mobile arms will play a crucial role in all aspects of orbital Starship launches. The first arm swings out to brace Super Heavy for Starship installation and connect the upper stage to power, propellant supplies, and other launch pad utilities. A more exotic pair of arms, nicknamed chopsticks, has a more complex job. 
on top of using the chopsticks to lift, stack, and demate starships and super heavy boosters in almost any weather and wind conditions, SpaceX wants to use the arms as an incredibly complex and precarious rocket recovery system. For a booster or starship catch, the rocket will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on hard points that appear to offer about as much surface area as a coffee table. Based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk himself, calling it a catch is a misnomer, as the arms will mainly move in one dimension, which is to open and close, and can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown, they are closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last second positional adjustments. Eventually, the chopsticks could shave a small amount of time off of post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or the same arms to attach a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships will still need legs. However, they will also inherently make proving their own efficacy a nightmare. By all appearances, the current recovery mechanisms on the arms and landing hard points on ships and boosters means that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two from a perfect bullseye or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive pressurized partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground guaranteeing an explosion that could damage surrounding infrastructure or start fires that might. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launch tower, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. At least to some extent, SpaceX likely knows this, and Super Heavy would likely need to be in excellent health and perform perfectly during the ascent and boost back portions of its launch debut to be cleared for a catch attempt. Ultimately, Starship's first orbital launch could end up being even more of a spectacle than it's already guaranteed to be. And with that, my time here is up, and I would like to spend this time to say thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.